Get ready, everyone. This is about to get very sad. Fast Fiestas. They're possibly the greatest line of performance cars ever. We've driven pretty much all of them, and in their own way, they all have a charm. There was the XR2, which was light and simple. Then there was the first ST, which is loved by... Well, it's loved by modders. The Mark VII, the one that really made it a legend. And then the Mark VIII, which showcased what a small, fast car really could be. Well, now there's this one, the latest Fiesta ST. But it's not just the latest Ford Fiesta ST. It's not just the next car. It's not just a facelift. It's not just a new one. It's the last one. This is the final car that will ever be called a Ford Fiesta ST. The end, finished, nothing more. Might be getting a little bit emotional about this one, but how do we make a film about such an important car? Do we put on some kind of weird funeral, dressing up as Vickers and pretending there's a coffin, or should we spend some time outside Ford with pitchforks and flames and trying to get them to continue making it? No, I think we just go for a drive. The Fiesta hasn't just been the best-selling car in Britain for years, it's been central to most of our lives. There's a decent chance that if you didn't learn to drive in a Fiesta, then you had one at some point, or you definitely knew someone who did. It accompanied our earliest forays into motoring with friends, and then when we'd grown up a little louder, a chance to move up, to own something cool, quick, to get into fast cars without breaking the bank. You might have modded one, you might have just owned one, you might have had a mate who had one and you rode around it, you might have just kept coming back to this car. Hell, you might have written one off. I'd argue that for all the supercars we've looked at, for all the high-end performance cars you'd have lusted over as a kid, there's been none that will have touched your life as much as the Fiesta ST. Because this was the car that you thought you might be able to own. The one that was attainable, the one that made you dream that you could finally own a performance car and then maybe you bought one and it was the thing that you wanted. And the thing is, the worst thing is about the fact that they're killing it off is that it's not done. It's not sliding towards the edge of its life and over the hill. The Fiesta itself is still the best-selling car in the UK. The best-selling, not just in its category, the best. This is just an absolute firecracker of a car. It's that Larry Pitbull that you own that looks scary and terrifies everyone else, but in reality is the friendliest thing that you've ever spent time with because it just loves you and it wants to have lots and lots of fun. Everything just fizzes right through you from your fingertips to your ass. All of the ways that a car can communicate are almost perfection. It's got delightfully heavy steering and when you put it in to the right throttle map and the throttle picks up perfectly the extra 30 newton meters of torque that it has these days makes it really quite rough but you can just have bags and bags of fun hitting corners at almost any speeds but you're never going to be going scary fast you're always just going to be at that level of oh this is absolute brilliant fun and then there's the chassis underneath which is and always has been spectacular. It's firm through the suspension and this is passive dampers. You can't alter that even by putting it in sport mode. It just has one single setting for that, the right setting for almost all moves. Yes, it's really rather firm at times, but that's just what you get with all ST products. It's something you should expect and just makes this car all the more, all the better for it. And you can hit bumps and just feel it kick up a little as it goes over and then grab that extra bit of grip again. It is just one of the best feelings you'll ever have in a car. <laughs> and it's only got 200 horsepower. I still maintain that this is possibly the most fun handling car around and I don't care what you want to tell me about supercars or 500 horsepower or whatever. You can take the RS and you can take the old Megans, but this thing will absolutely outsmile them every single where it goes. And then it's got that little one and a half litre three cylinder engine up front, which 
seemed like a massive downgrade when they put a three cylinder in this, but it turns out to be an absolute bonus because it sounds, oh, it sounds like half a 911 and it just warbles along with delight and it pops small pops and bangs out every now and then, but not in that pre-orchestrated expected manner that you get from something like the i20. You know, this one just pops two out every now and then, almost in a way of saying, yes, well done, mate. Keep on going because it—it it is just a car that wants at all times to be happy, to be moving, and to let you be part of it. I do have one problem with it, and that's that if this is the last Fiesta ST, the Ode to Joy at the end of its symphony, the car that we wave goodbye to it, why have they made it look like that? It's like taking the finest steak, the best mushrooms, the most wonderful potatoes and cooking them up and then just slathering them in ketchup. I mean, sure, it does its job. It keeps the wind off your knees, but it looks pretty terrible. It's got far too much face. No car should have this much face and be this small. It's just, the old one was pretty. It was a nice thing to look at. And that's just a bit, well, it's a bit gawky. But then, that's not what we're here for. What is underneath the Fiesta's rather gawky face is just some genius. Decades of knowledge and work, research and inspiration that has been poured into making this one of the best cars in history. The interior, well, five years ago, that looked pretty nice, but now it is starting to show its age a little bit, but that's the end of my gripes, that's it. There's nothing else wrong with this car. Nothing at all. It's not ready to go. I'm not ready for it to go. And what is there to replace it? There's Renault's RS's seem to be dead. Their Suzuki Swift Sport, it's not what it used to be. And Peugeot aren't really making anything particularly sporty anymore, nor a Citroen. Yeah, there's high riding crossovers, but you know, the Puma ST, it's nice. It's good. It's not this. Kona N, I'm told it's very good, but again, their cars have compromised. They ride high for no reason. In order to become performance cars, they have to get around those problems. Where's the sharpness? Where's the fun gonna come from? And now, it's all gonna be thrown away. I guess all we can say is, thank you, Fiesta, for everything. Maybe, actually maybe, there's time for one more drive.